Okay. So we'll try to uh, install this uh, seat pad on here. The red is a pretty close match. That is that's pretty surprising. <laughs> anyway. Um, the way these guys usually mount is in a crisscross pattern underneath the seat. So what we'll do is we'll put one of them on there. I don't know if I'm doing the right side or correct side first. Find out. I'll do the uh, the smooth side to the front without the adjuster. And you get this little hook that's on there. Once that grabs on, it's a pain in the butt to get off, but that's a good thing. So we'll do that. Oops, lost one. Yeah. And uh, same story here. Grabby, grabby. Okay. So now this is just going to go underneath and to the opposite side. So I can angle you guys to where you're watching anything besides my knees. So that's clipped on there. And then we'll just cinch up the slack and let it stay in a diagonal. And then you do the fine positioning you know, from the top, just scooch things around and keep cinching up whatever you need to do to get it right. Same story here. Okay. All right, so now we'll get that guy rough positioned. Get this one cinched. Hey, let's get this one cinched up. Once we get them tight, they won't float around. Sorry, you guys aren't looking at anything again. I guess it'd be easier to do this with a helmet or a, hammet, a hat rig of some kind, because the camera never seems to be looking where I'm looking. Okay, so... Get it in an X formation, see kind of how she plays. Reposition it a bit. Figure out the ins and the outs here. I think the enduro pad is going to fit better, but that's doable. I didn't have time to test fit and do the the whole, I'll try it out and then try another one. So I just ordered both of them at the same time. I'll send one of them back that I don't like, or maybe I'll keep it for one of my other rides. I don't know. Get them in about the same tension. Yeah, it's not moving. I'm not blocking my latch. Nope. Okay. Hmm. Okay then. Not bad. Not great. I think one that comes more forward will look a little more like it's kind of designed around the bike, but it's not bad. The main thing is comfort. I just want it to work. It really gives the seat a spring because of the, uh, the tension of the elastic straps. It's funny. It's good. A little uh, power assist for the opener there. Tighten it up a hair more. I don't think she's going to move. The only thing I want to stay away from is those right there, if I can, just because that's a, uh, a weight support. Uh, keeps the seat from shifting. It slots in here to keep the seat from kind of wiggling around, and I don't want it scissoring that strap under there. So I'm going to kind of go backwards there on both sides. Try to get her evened up. Yeah, looks about right. Yeah, works. Doing. Okay. Yeah, so this is kind of behind that. That's good. It's going to be kind of pinched in this area, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and open this side cover now because I need to put my uh, flat kit and some other things in there. I've got a little bag that's going to work nicely in there. Okay. Line's going down the middle of the seat. And as always, uh, got to blow these things up a little bit.
And what I usually do is blow them up full first. That way they expand and kind of stretch themselves out. But you don't want them full when you're sitting on them. You want it to be uh, very loose. All it's supposed to do is give you a little bit of uh, air space and cushion uh, for circulation and airflow and reduce uh, pressure points. A little less than that. I'll know when I sit on it in a minute. Good thing is they're very easy to adjust. Just blow on it. You don't have to have an air pump or anything silly like that. Yep, that's going to work. Oh yeah, that brake is going to piss me off. The seat is definitely higher with this on there, but I'm going to fix part of that right now. It's better. It's not as comfy as the big one that's on the Riker, or that I have for my other bikes. Mainly because I feel it dropping off right here by my boys. That's a very small front to back perch. So I think the uh, the dual sport is gonna be a better fit all the way around. Just because of the seat position on this where you know, you're kind of spread out across it. Uh, this right here is uh, right at the edge of my boys. We'll see. I'll give it a shot. If I don't like it, I'll send it back. Next. All right. So back to the luggage uh, options for touring and camping. Haven't had time to f uh, finish shopping for a Krieger or anything else. Uh, so I'm just going to make do with what I've got, which is probably going to be that guy. Um, I do have this uh, Shad SH29, 33, sorry, uh, that I have from other scoots. And I could put it right on there. I have an extra mounting plate that I could put on the rack. I don't know how easily it's going to go on the rack, and I certainly don't want to take that rack off of there again, not with all the problems I had putting it on. Uh, but, I don't know, everybody can kind of give me their opinions. What do you think of that? How does that look? I think it'll work all right. I would like it to be up a little higher. It, it will be, let's say, what, inch and a half, maybe two inches taller uh, when it's on the mounting base. But I think up about four inches would look even better. Uh, up somewhere in here uh, and maybe just a touch further back. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. But up, you know, four or five inches and back a little bit. But that'll actually make the backrest usable. <laughs> it's normally supposed to be for a pillion, not for the driver, but hey, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's one option. It doesn't look too bad. It would be a little higher than that and more centered if it were on the base properly. Probably just a touch back. Uh, with the base, it's going to come back. It's going to go up an inch or so and back about an inch and a half. Uh, anyway, so that's one option. Haven't decided yet. I'm not set on that idea. Uh, I'll try the mounting base. If it's too hard to get on there, if I have to take this thing off in order to get the bolts underneath it, then that's a no-go. Not going to happen. Uh, and I don't want to drill it right now, just to have time before this trip. So, uh, plan A, not plan B, is this guy. Uh, this is my go-to bag that I've used for years. It has a plastic stiffener in it. So it has its own structural support. I don't know if that shows on camera very well because it's kind of dark in there, but this plastic uh, stiffener or bladder inside helps it hold its shape so it doesn't droop, uh, or not too much anyway. Get it centered up. That's about center. Um, of course, you know, when it's closed up, it's a little tidier than that. And I could strap the other bag on top of it uh, for my camera gear or whatever else. Uh, it's... It's a little wide <laughs> for the cub, but it works. I mean, it works. It's not as bad as uh, you know, some of the people in Asia and India and everywhere else where they've got you know, a mountain of uh, produce on the back. <laughs> this works all right. So I think that's my answer for this trip. Uh, I've got room back here you know, along the, uh, all four corners of the rack to tie the little cam buckle straps uh, to hang onto the bag in four different directions. So it certainly won't go anywhere after I get it tied down. 
Uh, whereas on the Riker, it was, you know, kind of, the rear was loose because I didn't have two diagonal corners to tie off. But anyway, so I think that's my answer for this trip. Let's see if we can get a look at that overhang underneath. Uh, yeah, so it's hanging about, you know, what, three, three and a half inches. But when it's loaded uh, and tightened up, uh, that's still about as much as it's going to sag because of that uh, plastic stiffener in there. These are great roll bags. This is the D38, uh, I think. Yeah, D38. Dry spec is the new name. The old name was uh, just the twisted throttle uh, dry bag. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw the camping gear in that. Uh, I should be able to get most everything I need in there because I'm going fairly light this time. Uh, and as last time, I will throw all of my camera gear in my GoPro Seeker 2 backpack and shove that into a dry bag and it'll just sit right on top. Um, we're supposed to get some nasty weather up there in Austin again this weekend. We can never seem to get out of that rainy weekend pattern every weekend for the last, what, four months? Save maybe one weekend, we've had rain and storms. Anyway, so that's going to be the road prep for her with another little roll bag on the back. Make a trip to Austin.